Hi, I'm Carrie Yopak, and I'm a research assistant professor at the UWA Oceans Institute and in the School of Animal Biology. And my research primarily focuses on comparative brain morphology in sharks and their relatives, um, which is basically a fancy way of saying I look at shark brains. Uh, so I have loved sharks ever since I was really little. I think the first time I announced to my mother that I was going to be an ichthyologist, I was about five years old, uh, and that excitement really never waned. I read every book on sharks I could get my hand on. I watched every documentary I think they ever made on sharks. I was just completely fascinated by them. My work focuses on comparative brain morphology. So what that means is I investigate differences in brains across a wide range of species. Um, so I can look at the brain and investigate the relative size of different brain regions. So for example, the size of a brain region that receives visual input versus the size of a brain region that receives electroreceptive input, uh, meaning um, how sharks are able to sense minute electric fields in their environment. And so when you have a comparative data set across hundreds of species, you can actually be predictive about what senses those animals are likely specializing in to be successful in their environment. I've been collecting brains from a whole range of species and it tends to be pretty opportunistic. So um, we do our own fishing, but a lot of times an animal will simply wash up or um, die in an aquarium um, and Luckily, we're able to actually collect that tissue and use it for science. So at the moment, um, my collection of tissue is approximately 300 or so species. So we have got a temperature controlled room on campus. Um, literally, it's jars of brains. So you might call me the quintessential mad scientist. So there's so many benefits to being able to 3D print um, our brain tissue collections. Um, I think brains are not hugely accessible, literally or figuratively. Um, they are very difficult to get to in the skull and in a lot of ways the students find them sort of inaccessible. They see them as being sort of mushy and gross and uh, it, it can actually alienate students quite a lot when you think about it. Uh, so being able to 3D print them actually gives students access to geometrically accurate brain sample with the ability to pick it up, um, move it around, see some of the features of the brain, um, but actually doesn't degrade the very precious tissue that we have in our collections, which is another huge advantage. I think it's really important as lecturers as scientists to constantly be thinking laterally. We're always thinking laterally about the way we do our science, the newest techniques. We need to think laterally about the way we're teaching our students as well. Um, I'm a visual learner, I'm a tactile learner, um, and I think that students really gain an understanding of material when it's something that they can pick up and move around. Um, another advantage with 3D data that I think is hugely important is how scalable this is. I can use this brain in perpetuity and once it gets old or it gets damaged I can simply print another one and that negates the need to constantly be collecting new samples um, because we can ask you know we could print out 20 of these tomorrow if we wanted to um, which means that basically the science and the discovery just keeps extending um, and digital data is forever it doesn't go away so you can ask new questions of that data again and again and again um, and as a scientist, one of my priorities is constantly reducing the number of animals we need to take out of the environment. Um, it's constantly pushing uh, for conservation. And to me, this really enables a lot of those initiatives um, to making, keeping the fish in our oceans that we want to keep there, but pushing education forward and advancing the field of neuroscience.